Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. We start with the tragic accidents in the Silesian mines. There were methane explosions in the Pniewek mine and a few days later there was a shockwave in the Zofiorka mine. In total, 12 miners were confirmed to have died in both cases. But four employees of the Zofiorka mine and seven from the Pniewek mine are still missing. There are 20 in hospital, some of them are in a serious condition. On Saturday night, an earth tremor took place in the Zofiovka mine, as a result of which 10 miners were trapped underground. The collapse took place 900 metres underground. On Saturday, rescuers reached four victims. This morning, two more bodies were found in the buried section of the mine. The rescuers transported two miners from the danger zone to the surface, and the doctor declared them dead. We have six victims of this tragic incident at the Zofiovka mine. The condition of one person does not allow identification. Our colleagues died in two of these actions, as we already know. The Pinyuvek mine, methane explosion, and the Zofiovka mine, rock collapse. Earlier, after midnight on Wednesday, there had been a methane explosion in the Pinyuvek mine. Rescuers went to collect miners trapped underground. Then there was another explosion. Five rescuers were killed. On Sunday after 7 p.m., one of the 21 miners in the Pinyuvek mine died. He was in a serious condition at the burn treatment center in Szymianowice, Szlonskia. This is the sixth victim of the blast. Seven people still haven't been found. Prime Minister Morawiecki expressed his sympathy and declared full psychological and financial support for the family members of the victims of the tragic events at the Pinyuvek and Zofiovka mines. Rodziny, żony. The families, wives of the closest miners who died in Zofiówka and Pinyuvek, will be taken care of by the Polish state. The Katowice branch of the Industrial Development Agency determined that in 2021 almost 5 million tons of coal were mined in Poland. Last year about 80,000 people worked in the mines, of whom approximately 60,000 worked underground, risking their lives working in dangerous conditions. There are 20 hard coal mines in Poland. Only five of them are non-methane mines. The remaining ones have high methane levels and operate in conditions with a serious risk of explosion. According to the statistics of the State Mining Authority, in the years 2000 to 2021, there were 60 ignitions and explosions of methane in Polish mines. The 61st day of the Russian invasion of Ukraine has passed. The civilians sheltered in the Azovstal plant in Mariupol are begging for help. Russian forces continue their attack despite the fact that Easter was celebrated in the Eastern churches on Sunday. The Russians continue to drop aerial bombs, use naval artillery, shoot from tanks, and infantry attacks continue. This Sunday, Eastern Rite Christians celebrated the Feast of the Lord's Resurrection. Easter at the front was also celebrated by soldiers fighting in eastern Ukraine. In the short breaks between the fighting, the chaplains blessed food and administered the sacrament. This is our life in this cross. How many people are there who have a cross on their neck but no soul? In Mariupol, women and children have been hiding underground for two months. They also spent Easter there. How long will this last? From whom are we protected here? Help us. Stop the aggression of the Russian Federation in my country. My country is dying. My city is completely destroyed. There is not a single living place here. Everything has been... The children that are here are constantly crying. They want to play. They want to live. The Russian army has made this year's eastern Ukraine red with blood, said Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Russia was offered an Easter ceasefire, but the Orthodox world saw that Easter meant nothing to the Russian aggressors. For them, it is just a red date on the calendar that requires special words, special behavior, but not what is called faith and not what is called Christian charity. The Russian army made this Easter not only formally red in the calendar, but also red with blood. The Russians continue attacks on critical infrastructure facilities. Today, Kremienchuk in the Poltava Oblast and the cities of Marinka, Kozyatin, Zdolbunov, great railway junctions, have been shelled nine times. The rockets damaged five railway stations in central and eastern Ukraine, and the traction substation of the Krasna railway station was damaged near Lviv. There are no casualties. One worker has been injured. Buildings in the area are damaged, windows are broken and roofs collapsed. The commission works, losses are added up, train traffic resumes. Ukrainian forces regain control of five towns in the Mykolaiv Oblast near the border with the Kherson Oblast.
The troops of the Russian Federation are not proceeding as planned. On the contrary, we are witnessing very successful counterattacks by subunits of the armed forces of Ukraine. Women must be ready to defend themselves and their families, which is why shooting classes are held in Ivano Franki list. Currently, 6,300 women have signed up for such classes. Shooting ranges arranged in schools are ready to accept all women who want to learn the basics of handling weapons. Since the beginning of the invasion of Ukraine, Russia has lost almost 22,000 soldiers, 181 aircraft, 884 tanks and 441 artillery systems. The hometown of the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, Kriviri, is preparing for an attack by Russian troops. The Ukrainian army expects it to start within the next few days. The French have decided. President Emmanuel Macron has won the presidential election with 58.5% of the vote, compared with the 41.5% won by Marine Le Pen to become the first sitting president to be re-elected in 20 years. Despite losing, Le Pen's share of the vote was the highest ever yet for the far right in a presidential election in France. According to the exit polls, Emmanuel Macron was the winner of yesterday's presidential election, defeating his opponent Marine Le Pen by winning over 58% of the votes. The leader of the National Unity Party won just over 41% of the vote. This is slightly less than during the second round of elections in 2017. At that time, Emmanuel Macron achieved support with 66% of the vote, Marine Le Pen almost 34%. After the announcement of the victory, President Macron said that the recent crises were only a prelude to the historic challenges facing his next presidency. After five years of transformation, happy and difficult moments, unique crises, today most citizens made a choice and trusted me. I know that many of our fellow citizens voted for me to prevent the far right from taking power. I would like to thank them and say that this voice is listening. Macron also addressed the voters who voted for his opponent, Marine Le Pen. From now on, I am no longer a candidate for one camp, but the president of all. I understand many of our countrymen who have chosen the extreme right today. I understand their anger and opposition. I have to find an answer for them too. Marine Le Pen, who was the closest to winning during this year's election, could not hide her disappointment at losing. However, she announced that she did not intend to give up her political career. I will continue my commitment to building a better France. And I will work for the French with the energy, perseverance and affection that you know me for. Tonight I will say it again. I will never leave the French people. Long live the Republic. Long live France. As the spokesman for the French government, Gabriel Attal, noted, the victory of Emmanuel Macron is the best choice for France, which means peace and stability for the whole country. The president was re-elected by a majority of votes. This is unprecedented in the history of the Fifth Republic. This result has historical responsibility. Congratulatory messages from all over the world were sent to the Elysee Palace. Using Twitter, messages came from, among others, Volodymyr Zelensky, Ursula von der Leyen and Mateusz Morawiecki. Congratulations to President Emmanuel Macron, a true friend of Ukraine, for his re-election. I wish him further success, which will translate into the good of people. Dear President Emmanuel Macron, congratulations on your re-election as President of the French Republic. I look forward to continuing our excellent cooperation. Each election is a celebration of democracy. Even after the hottest campaign comes a time of tedious work. Poland and France have many common challenges and common interests. The presidential election divided France. The slight difference in votes indicates a polarised society and the French themselves do not hide their emotions after the announcement of the results. I am very pleased with the result as President Macron has already led us through some difficult moments. He showed courage and here is the result. I voted for Marine Le Pen, so I am a bit disappointed with the result even though I was expecting it. I think Marine Le Pen is the kind of person who could embody some French resurgence in the long run. In many places in the country, including Paris and Lyon, many protests against Macron began shortly after the announcement of the voting results, demonstrated through fireworks at police cars and the police used tear gas. Re-election does not mean a bright future for everyone in France. Macron. I think Macron is undoubtedly an intelligent and capable politician, but nevertheless a politician who wants to manage the status quo, who comes from the same establishment that has ruled France and almost all of Europe for many years. It seems to me that he may have a problem with solving the basic problems in France. He will try to manage what is, so I have doubts whether this is the best way, but well, the French decided how they decided. Winning the presidential election is undoubtedly a success for Macron. 
but he needs one more battle to be fully victorious. The so-called third round, that is the parliamentary elections, will be held on the 12th of June. Then the voters will decide what the scope of the president's power will be. Full, that is, in the rule of his own camp, the need to build a coalition or a prime minister from another party, which means five years of friction and a tug of war. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us at the weather, Poland daily business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.